Yo, what's good guys? Rolo Dumpster Nice here. Welcome back to my channel. And this is a Q&A photography edition. Before we start, we're gonna take a shot. Probably gonna finish this Hennessy Cause one. Cheers to your weekend. On my Facebook and my Twitter, I asked anything photography related. I got a handful of questions, so this is it. Oh, and some of you guys were wondering what camera did I get, and that would be these guys here. If you guys haven't seen my vlog, I picked up four cameras and one that I'm currently editing right now. This one I got for $2. Still got the sticker tag on it. This is the Holgo 120N. Let me just slide this one off along with this one. You just pretty much need the film. There you go. And the back just comes off like that. You have your roll over here and your film goes on this side. Cover it up, put this guy back on. Take off the lens cap and you're good to go. Again, I got this one for $2. And the second one I got was a Brownie Bullet camera. Now this one's a pretty smaller camera. Here's the palm of my hand and that's pretty much how small it is. Very similar to the Holga. You push this latch down here along with this one. Now the back detaches and you can load your film. All these cameras are actually all functional. Here that shutter. This one I found at Thrift Town. It's a little dirty. There's some tape here, but very similar to the Polaroid Land camera with the other one over here. This is the automatic 100 and this one's the automatic 104. The only difference between this one has a little different functionalities and whatnot. Can't really move this one, but you can still focus moving this side to side. You can choose your film on top of here, whether you want color or black and white. Now, the really cool thing about this camera is it's a foldable camera. So all you have to do is just press this guy down here and it goes down. This one flaps over and you're good to go. I really like the Polaroid Land camera series. They're really fun to shoot and it's a friendly camera. You'd be surprised with the amount of people that come up to you and be like, oh, is that a Polaroid? They still make film for that? And they actually do. Impossible Film actually makes that film for this camera. On the bottom part, they have this latch where this one actually comes off and you can load your film right here. The other one over here actually has film loaded, so that one's actually ready to go. Last but not least is actually another Polaroid. Pretty familiar model. Just push this latch down here and you can load your film. This one I actually got at a flea market. Again, I'm working on the vlog for it. We post it very soon. These are the cameras that I got, but Let's jump right into the Q&A. This was a really good question. If camera lens are round, why are the pictures square? That's a very good question. And it's pretty simple. Let me get this Pentex here. Since your lens is round and your center is square, that's pretty much why the photos turn out the way they are. Now, if the insides were actually a circular or whatever shape, that's pretty much what the image would turn out to be. But because your lens are circle or a round shape and the sensor is pretty much a square or a rectangle, whatever shape it is, that's the shape the photo is going to actually be. So what's my favorite photo? My favorite photo is actually the next photo I'm going to take. Now, but honestly, it's probably my uh, Japan photo I took. Basically shooting Harajuku Crosswalk. I've always wanted to go there. I've always wanted to take that photo. The one from Fast and Furious Tokyo Drift. That's probably one of my favorite photos. Or the ones I'm creating of my family members, memories. Those are probably my favorite. What's your biggest struggle with photography at this point in your career? Man, that's a really good question. And honestly, I think that the biggest struggle, hmm, oh, you got me there, man. I gotta think about this. Biggest struggle. I think the honestly, the biggest struggle that I would probably have is knowing that there's always competition, that there's always somebody wants it more than you do. There's always somebody who is money hungry. There's always somebody who wants it more than yourself. And I think honestly, you just always put in the work. If you're lazy, sometimes I get lazy. It's part of the game. You get kind of lazy, but you just got to constantly remind yourself that like no one else is doing it besides yourself. I don't think I can think of anything that really is a struggle besides knowing that there's a lot of competition in this game and this in this whole world of photography. Whether you're in the field of editorial, photojournalism, all those kind of things, it's both the fear and knowing that your competition always on the rise. Whether or not you get lazy or you're tired or any of that kind of stuff, I think that's honestly maybe probably the biggest struggle is knowing that you have competition every single day and you have to constantly prove yourself over and over. I don't know if that answered your question, but uh, I'm gonna just put it out there just for you like that. Can I pay you an exposure? Sure. What is your go-to lens when you're shooting for yourself and not business related? Honestly, if it's for the vlog, the 17 through 35, if it's anything else, probably 24 by 70. Real good versatile lens, really love that lens. Which lens do you use for your vlog? And if I wanna buy my first wide angle lens, which one will you recommend? The lens I always use for my vlog is the 17 through 35 and the 24 by 70. Those are the two lenses I mainly use the wide shots that you guys actually see when I do the selfie with the gorilla pod when I stick it out like this and I talk I use a 17 by 35 other stuff when I'm shooting b-roll and stuff 24 by 70 it's a little 
both here and there. And if you want to buy your first wide angle lens, I'd probably suggest, depending on what kind of camera body you got and what your price range is and how much you want to spend, all things come in effect there. 1735, 16 to 35, 17 by 55, there's a 35, there's a 24 fixed lens, all different kind of lenses. The 1735 and the 18 to 35, like all those kind of lens that has like a wide to zoom, those are like my go to. If you're shooting Nikon, 1735. If you're shooting Canon, 16 to 35. I know some people use the 17 by 40. It really depends on how much you want to spend and what your budget is. So I hope that answers your question, but I use a 17 by 35. That's my go-to lens. Oh, and you know, they have the 14 by 24. What is photography to you? What was my very first camera? What made you keep going till this day? Photography for me is honestly just making and creating memories, capturing the moments. I always tell myself, it doesn't really matter how many times I take photographs. If I'm creating something, I'm making memories. That's all that really matters to me. Everything else is pretty much second nature. My very first camera that I bought was a Nikon D40. I don't really remember the first camera I got. What made me keep going till this day? Competition the fear of failure, proving somebody wrong that doesn't believe in me and knowing that no one else is going to do this besides myself. And it jumps right into the next question what Karen asked. How do you find motivation to keep shooting? It's basically the same thing that I said to Anthony's answer. I do it because no one else is going to do it for me. You always got to put in the work if you really want something. Nothing is really handed to you. Nothing is really given to you unless you're lucky and some other factors. But depending on what kind of cards you've been dealt with, I just do it because no one else is really going to do it besides myself. And I've always told myself that mentality. Can I get by using a point and shoot camera for commercial editorials? Yes and no. I think exactly what I'm talking about, Butch. But yes and no. What is my favorite mirrorless camera? I haven't shot with too many mirrorless camera, but I really like the Sony A7S, A7R, A-S, A-B-A. -A. Yeah, that camera. It's a really good camera. What is your next international photo destination? Thailand, Singapore, Asia area, that seems cool. Europe, Paris, Brazil, I don't know. Wherever the world takes me. When doing on location shoots, how do you find location spots? to shoot at. Scouting them a day before or getting to the location early and just really finding spots. Whenever I shoot weddings, I actually get there about like an hour or 30 minutes early just to scout certain areas that I really want to. I usually get there early and find the spots. Catch me outside, how about that? Raindrop, drop top. Whoopity, whoopity, whoop. Catch me outside, how about that? Stop it. If you didn't pick up photography, what was your next choice at the time? Good question. Video game development. As a younger child, I've always played video games and I've always enjoyed them. Nintendo, Super Nintendo, N64, Sega Saturn, Sega Genesis, all the consoles up to now, Xbox One, Xbox 360, PS4, all those kind of games, Nintendo 3DS, all those. It would probably be in the field of gaming. Yeah, probably doing something like that. What's your favorite spot slash event you shot? Probably photographing for Big Sean. I've always been a fan of his music the moment I heard him. I got in contact with UC Riverside, drove down from the Bay to LA. This was a non-paid gig. I knew I had a chance of actually photographing Big Sean and actually meeting him. Although I didn't meet him, I was able to photograph Big Sean. That was basically always a dream of mine. I've always been a fan of his music. Got two photos here. I have a couple more, but this is just pretty much on the wall. One is this is one with the crowd. Whenever you're shooting concerts, this is called a photo pit. They give you about 10 minutes or up to three songs. You can photograph the artist, whoever it could be. They give you three songs and the security guard kind of just tells you, you gotta go, you gotta leave. So they give you 10 minutes or three songs in total. It's loud, it's hectic, it's fun, it's crazy. I love it. And then you have this photograph of Big Sean. Being someone that you're a fan of their music and you're photographing them, it's the joy and the feeling that you have knowing that you listen to them and you probably know that you're never ever gonna see them or shoot them ever again. So I always put my best foot forward and my 100% to just try my best to get the best photo captured. And this is pretty much when he was on his I Am Finally Famous tour. And it kind of felt like I met him, even though I didn't, but photographing him, you know, my camera stuff. This has always stuck in my mind that this is probably one of my most favorite events slash photo shoots I've done. And it's just something I've always held in my head. Like, wow, man, I actually photographed like Big Sean at a concert and stuff like that. I know a lot of people that shoot music artists. They'll tell you that like photographing for their favorite music artists, they tell you that it's actually the joy of just photographing and being in the presence of the same person that you know you've been a fan of. It's a good feeling, it's a good feeling. So that's probably one of the best slash fun shoots I've done. You see Riverside, so yeah. Sean. So I have a Nikon J1 camera with a basic standard 10 through 30 millimeter f 3.5 to 5.6 VR. If I change the lens to a 10 through 100 f 4.5 through 5.6 VR white, will that make the picture better? What's the benefits of buying a different lens? Because the lens is worth as much as the camera. Well, there's like two, three different topics that I go about it. I'll just give you my best answer. Yes and no. The standard 10 through 30 millimeters, that's like a super wide, then a 
like it's like taking a step forward that's pretty much what the 10 through 30 is kind of like wide and you kind of get like a little up close it's a pretty much standard like a 3.5 to 5.6 with the f-stop so whenever you zoom in or out the f-stop constantly changes unless you have it a constant like 5.6 or whatever that's pretty much it if you were to change the lens to a 10 through 100 millimeter the f-stop kind of changes but it still keeps in that dynamic area of 4.5 to 5.6 the f-stops gives you a little less light it's like super wide but now you have like a telephoto lens which is like super up close. I don't have that camera, but that's what the millimeter difference is. The lower the number is, the wider the image the shot is that you're going for. The larger the number is, the more up close you are. So that's it. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, what's a DSLR? Well, you can always just Google stuff. Nah, I'm just playing, man. Digital single lens reflex. Basically film camera, which is the SLR, and then you have the digital one, DSLR digital he also asked a couple other questions why don't you use a point and shoot right here hey it's filmed dead no not really why do you use digital it's easier and limited shots current modern do you believe in the previous notion that the picture takes a part of your soul i guess why do you steal my photography and claim it as it's your own maybe you're stealing my photos how do you process so many photos yet still have time to have a life the same thing i always tell everybody i do it because no one else is going to do it for me how do you make the background blurry and the subject focus with the canon 70d couple things to answer your question if this is your 70d it depends on the lens you have and basically the distance you have depending on your environment what you're shooting comes up with how to make a background like super blurry but your image in focus the distance and the lens that you're using if this is a 52.0 or 1.8 or 1.4 1.2 or whatever lens you have it's the f-stop slash aperture lower the number the more crazy your depth of field is and how blurry bokeh your background is going to be that's mainly it that's why camera lenses cost various prices and whatnot because they have different f-stops and millimeters all do different functionalities of what you're trying to do or achieve hopefully that answers your question is both the lens the distance of your subject or whatever you're trying to shoot and the background and whatnot yeah hope that answers your question if i go on my twitter what are good starter leds for aspiring photographers slash vloggers there's a couple things here because it really depends on like what you're trying to shoot what's your budget how much you want to spend you can use a standard kit lens that comes with a camera body you could be a person who just wants prime lens i always tell people get a 50 because it makes you think outside the box i know your question is regarding in terms of both photographers and vloggers you know if you're vlogging you want something really wide so you actually show what you're trying to achieve or what you're trying to show and so actually when i vlog i use actually a wide angle lens which is also like a 20 by 70 or even at 17 to 35 but when i take in photos i could use like a 50 millimeter or 85 or a 17 through 55 or 24 by 70 it really depends what is a good 35 millimeter film slr to start with i like this one the canon ae1 this is a really good one to start with and the last question is from s3pa2u strepatu have you used mirrorless camera on some of your shots yes and no so before ending this q a segment there are all these other people that did ask me all these other questions so this wraps up the q a segment on photography now i know there's other questions that didn't get answered and for those who asked me questions again i appreciate your time asking me the questions and i hope i answered them best way possible from both my experience and my knowledge that i could also think of and give to you guys if you guys like this q a let me know down below in the comment section thumbs up this video that would really mean a lot to me and if you haven't yet subscribe i'm always putting out video content weekly on a daily basis one last thing before i go this is kind of like a drinking series this one's for you guys Hope you guys have a good weekend. Stay safe. Enjoy yourself. Rolo keeps saying it's going to be good with a thumbs up. Someone said I should come up with something different. I don't know, but I just keep saying it. Thanks again, guys, for watching my video. And as always, it's going to be good.